Hey guys, I am Colleen Foch and I am a CrossFit athlete um, at OPEX in Arizona. Okay, so we're here with Colleen Foch. Uh, one of the cool things about traveling and being Z-list famous on Instagram is sometimes <laughs> you get to hang out with elite level athletes and so we get to grill you about your life, your goals, and what you're doing. For people who don't know you, mm -hmm. tell us about your background. I started CrossFit in 2014. Fortunately, parents let me try every sport under the sun, soccer, softball, t-ball before that. That was always fun. Um, and then swimming was the one that kind of stuck. Um, and so did that uh, throughout high school. I actually really wanted to play volleyball, but my parents said I was too short, so oh. we didn't do that. Um, and so stuck with swimming in high school. Thought about maybe doing it in college, but wasn't quite good enough to look at some of the top tier schools. So thought about giving it up towards the end of high school. Um, and then we moved out to California my junior year in high school and matched up with a great coach that um, him and I worked really well together and then kind of peaked my a little late, like my senior year in high school. And uh, fortunately after that, um, a lot of the Pac-10, top Pac-10 schools at the time, um, Cal, Stanford were reaching out, um, but I had already committed to Notre Dame, so uh, and I have a big family history there, so it was really cool to get in there and to be able to swim there, uh, so went there my freshman year, didn't, wasn't really into South Bend, Indiana, no. so no, not, not, not quite, um, and then so decided to transfer to Cal my sophomore year. Um, Swam there, was awesome, got to go to Olympic trials. Uh, wait, 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 you're an Olympic level athlete? Uh, not Olympic trials. Olympic trial not level. Olympic, Do you yeah. put that in your bio? Is that a thing? Like It's like, on my resume. It's on your resume. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah for sure. 100%. Um, and got to be a part of a relay that broke an American record, so that was really cool. Stopped swimming in 2012 and had no idea what I wanted to do workout wise. Um, but how come you stopped swimming? So that's the big. So so you're a standout swimmer who, mm -hmm. by your own admission, peaked later. Yeah. Which would, t you know, most athletes who end up peaking later tend to have longer careers or whatever they they peak late on mm -hmm. if given the opportunity to pursue that. Mm -hmm. So you would graduate college. Yeah. Do you have you didn't have any more eligibility left, or you just didn't want to swim anymore, or what's the? Uh, so I had no collegiate eligibility left. Okay. So I could have gone technically pro. Um, There's pro swimmers. Yeah. Is it a thing? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. No, there is. I mean, okay. you're not making unless you're Michael Phelps or Natalie Coughlin and sure. those people. You're not making much money, but um, but you can go pro. Uh, I don't know if this really makes a difference, but so college swimming is swam in short course yards. Okay. So it's a 25 yard pool. Yeah, and then um, you have a long pool for pro stuff. For Olympics, yeah. Oh. So I was significantly better at short course yards than long course meters. Gotcha. So long course meters was for Olympic trials, Olympics. So I was decent enough to get to trials, but Olympics was just, unless it was short course yards, probably wasn't going to be on the table for me so I figured um, that if I wasn't going to get to that next step I was kind of like hey, you know I'll move on from it or end on a high note so got it this is actually a little known fact about me so I swam for two years in high school Did you? I, I know what you're thinking that I have the build of a great Definitely. swimmer. Definitely. Yeah, yes. I think when you're looking for the prototypical swimmer, you're looking for like short, very broad, yes. and then lots of hair. Like mm -hmm. as much, yeah, yeah, yeah extra, extra hair. For the hair. drag. For the drag, yeah, I yeah. think, because you, you want a but strong... But then for the meets, you shave it off. You shave it off, right. And then you're really fast. <laughs> I was actually, so I was terrible at almost everything. I wasn't a good, I'm not great at freestyle. Mm -hmm. Backstroke, I probably would have drowned. And then... Uh, uh, what stroke did you do? Right, so I was a flyer. Oh, uh, me too. Yeah, like, you know, uh -huh. so people are like, oh, what'd you do those lats from? Uh, and the running joke is that it's from... From butterfly. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's interesting. So, and then Baraki, uh, Dr. Baraki's uh, barbell medicine is our partner. He's, yeah. He was also a really good swimmer. He swam at William & Mary in college. Oh, and, cool. So, we're just a bunch of swimmers, not me included. Like, yeah, I think... Yeah. <laughs> I won't drown, but, <laughs> but you know, well, I, would consider, I would consider it. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Okay, so... <laughs> Uh, so you're, it's 2012, mm -hmm. you're, eh, I'm out of swimming, and at that point, you're like, then what? 
one of the reasons I stopped was I honestly didn't enjoy training for swimming all that much. Okay. Um, loved racing, and I loved the weight room. Um, so you guys did a lot of, when was the first time you touched a weight? So probably my first experience with Olympic lifting was my freshman year in college. So they actually taught Power us, kind of like level one CrossFit, taught us how to clean with a wall ball. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you had a medicine ball. Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Dick, Cal Dick Cowley, who's the guy who created the Dynamax balls, uh -huh. right, right, is like turning over. Like he just is. He's like, I didn't mean it for this to happen, <laughs> happen like this. All right. Yeah. So freshman year, you learned to do a, a med ball clean. Yeah. And then you first time you touched a barbell, how much did you you clean? I remember in at Cal, um, probably the most would have been. 125 maybe well you say that now because you're like oh that's not even that much no but for yeah no for sure well and also my lifts were not technically sound at the time any gym in america any commercial gym in america if there's a, a girl a woman who's yeah. power cleaning 125 i mean people are stopping to watch what's <laughs> happening right yeah. I mean, you know, not at a CrossFit gym necessarily, mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah. at, at a, another gym, so... No, it's true. I started talking with my strength coach at the time about doing an internship after I graduated. Right. Um, and wanted to go into that field because I was like, I love the gym, I love working with athletes or being around athletes. It's like, this would be amazing if I could make this my job. So, my, if anyone had asked at the time, what, Colleen, what's your dream job? would say to be a D1 collegiate strength and conditioning coach. But honestly, I thought it was going to be something that was five years down the road, just because I'd seen so many people around me that went from internship to internship and then tons of more schooling and then still weren't getting in the door. Um, I mean, a lot of that has to do with someone has to leave before you can take that job. Sure. Um, leave or die, that's the thing. Yeah, right. Like, how do you get that? I would, so like Instagram Live, somebody would be like, oh, I want to be a D1 strength and conditioning coach at like University of Miami. Like, yeah. how, do, how do I get there? I'm like, all right, so I don't know who the coach is there now, but he either has to <laughs> he retire. He has to leave. Okay, right. Well, one, yeah. he, which is, this is a problem. Yeah, Two, sure. has to either leave or pass on. Yeah. And then at that point, the assistant is going to get in. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, there's like a, it's like indentured servitude until you get the call mm -hmm. up to the majors. Oh, so true, yeah. And uh, yeah, I remember that being impressed upon me. I, I used to be a big, like... I was at you know, the National Strength and Conditioning Association, you get your CSCS. Oh, I got that. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you go to all the stuff. meetings and you're like, you know, rubbing elbows with people yeah, who are putting out the studies much. that you're reading, right? Yeah. And um, I remember I was at the, it was 2010, I was in Orlando, Florida. It was the only, like, it, it, it was an unseasonably cold January. I went down there because I was like, oh, it's going to be warm. No. Yeah. It was snowing. Yeah, it was no. snowing. And then the weird part was apparently geckos do not tolerate the cold. So they crawl up trees and then die and then fall. <laughs> Yeah, it was weird. So every time you pass a tree in Orlando, there's just a, like a grave of geckos. It was a weird time. Uh, I, just, I don't know why I remember this. But anyway, yeah. so I was talking to this guy who was a, a D1 strength co assistant strength coach, mm -hmm. but a Division One school, and he also worked at this place called IMG, which was like this in Florida. It's this huge campus of strength conditioning. It's like the mecca. They have like full golf courses and tennis courts. And actually, CrossFit went there with like Camille and a few other athletes to like mm -hmm. test their like broad jump and vertical jump and like how yeah. will they pass the functional movement screen right. and I was like hey man like what are you like making a year you know because yeah, I thought this right. I made it right. this is yeah. where I want to be mm -hmm. and he's like you know I make like 45,000 a year I was uh -huh. like wait what <laughs> yeah I was like all right. of this if you, uh -huh. you've gotten a position that a few can get to right mm -hmm. and you have to have a college degree and you have to have a, you know additional education you have to know people yeah. and you're making not much money and also your job's on the line because if you hurt, if someone gets hurt, whether it's your fault or not, if oh, you're sure. if your teams are having bad seasons, again, which is not your fault, you're not the recruiter, mm -hmm. okay, and you don't control the the strategy of the game, yeah, yeah you're off on the line. And at that right. point, I was like, maybe this isn't what I want to do. Yeah, I love coaching, right? But I don't want that sort of responsibility that if I'm not if I'm not in control. Yeah, so I had every intention of doing like about maybe a year uh, in that strength and conditioning department, and my family still is in Illinois, but was also in Illinois at the time. It's like, you know, I'm good with California, I'll move back to Illinois after this, and then start, you know, uh, I don't know whether it was more schooling or whatever it was to get to my dream job at the time. So, um, 
And then that summer, the guy who was my strength coach while I was swimming calls me up just randomly out of the blue. I was at home visiting my parents and said, you know, I'm leaving Cal and I'm recommending you for the job. And I was like, no. I mean, I'm 23, a female. Sure. I was... I mean, I loved the weight room and stuff, but I wouldn't say I was really qualified to, I don't know, have that on my plate at the time. Um, well, why did you feel that way, though? Because at the time, you'd gone through, you'd been an athlete, yeah, right? And you had your CFCS. Mm -hmm. And so most people at that point would probably feel like, well, I've checked the next necessary boxes. Yeah. What was your reticence, you think, towards like, why did you feel like you didn't necessarily deserve it? I think it was mostly because everyone else in the strength department at the time was, one, I think the closest person in age to me was maybe like eight to 10 years older. And then also had done just so much more research, schooling, and so I just felt a little behind. But but like you said, I did feel like I brought experience to the table and the fact that I was an athlete at Cal. Yeah, um, so you kind of knew the way the system worked. Yeah. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Now, if this thing happened again, mm -hmm. would, I mean, do you feel like you're qualified at this point in your life? Yeah. You're probably more qualified. <laughs> Given your experience and then your sort of exposure to different coaching and actual training. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just been out in the world more, have picked up a lot more she's, things. From she's a people. woman of the world now, folks. <laughs> yeah. That's 2013. Yes. You haven't found CrossFit yet. No. Haven't gone to church. Got it. Really, <laughs> yeah, really. Well, actually, so that was... It would have been 2012. 2012. Or okay. end of 2012. Yeah. 2012. So you're doing Zumba, you're doing uh, spin classes. Oh, I did. I did spin, cardio hip hop. I think I, I probably did Zumba at some point. Sure. Um, yeah. We're not talking about it. Yeah. Step classes, uh -huh. all of them. Yeah. Okay. And so, and then when is the first time you do a CrossFit class? Uh, summer of 2004. No, 13. And then, okay, so you do CrossFit. Day one, you go in there. What are your mm -hmm. thoughts? So I went in and I remember the workout was deadlifts and I don't know if Turkish get-ups were in the workout, but they definitely were either, I don't know, like a strength or skill piece before and then um, definitely went way too heavy. I'd never done a Turkish get-up before, right. and, but I went in being like, oh, I got this it's fine. Um, and I distinctly remember walking in, the workout was deadlifts and something else, and the... Normally, you know, if you walk into a CrossFit gym, you have to do some sort of on-ramp yeah, yeah. class Elements or something. something. Yeah. Sure. And so I had talked to the owner and some people there, and I was like, hey, I was a college athlete. You know, I've done that, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, yeah, yeah, it's okay. Like, we'll help you out and stuff. So kind of skipped that process, which I probably <laughs> yeah. shouldn't have. Right. Like, yeah, it's fine. Because <laughs> like, I, you know, had never done a snatch or, I mean, honestly, I don't know if I've pressed overhead before. So, right. um, and I remember the coach, uh, who ended up being a really good friend of mine, was like, have you ever done deadlifts? And my answer was, lots. <laughs> I was like, That's a great answer. <laughs> you like and that. I was just so excited about it, but, uh, and I was sore as the next day, but like, was obsessed. Yeah. Like, went seven days a week. I was like, I don't need rest days. Like, I was like, Sure, I don't have a problem. I can stop whatever <laughs> yeah, I want. Yeah, right. I totally drink the Kool Aid. Just as an aside, I feel like have like have you ever done deadlifts? Like, is a great screening question if, on dating apps. Like, if you ask, <laughs> you match with somebody and you have to ask totally. like, an opener, yeah, have you ever done deadlifts? And if their answer is lots, then I think right. you should say cool, let's yeah. hang out. But if the answer is what are deadlifts, like that's a red flag, and you should oh, move on. Oh no, yeah, yeah, definitely not. Well, that, that's interesting too, though. So that's 2013. That's like a very interesting time in CrossFit. It's literally blowing up. I mean, mm, I went through yeah. my I, I went through my level one in 2007 or 2008. So oh, wow. like. Okay. <laughs> You're like, no, I just well, you're, you're, like you're, you're much older. <laughs> no, I didn't mean it like that. So you gotta, you gotta watch out for that. Uh, you can date yourself quickly. Um, yeah, and and uh, at the time, like CrossFit was like fringe, you know. Mm -hmm. So if you were at a CrossFit gym, you're like, you kind of had to drive somewhere, you know, remote, yeah. especially in the Midwest, you know. And you're like, where's this warehouse? It's unlabeled, mm -hmm. you know. But you felt cool. At that at that time, like CrossFit was much more. I mean, there were more options. Yeah. So, and so you went in there, you said you were an athlete, they're like, nah, you don't have to do this on-ramp thing, it's fine. Yeah. And then, uh, I mean, were you stronger than everybody else off the bat? Um, for the most part, but not with 
the more technical lifts. Sure. Uh, like, uh, it was funny, I was actually going through old videos, uh, and I found my one rep max snatch video at the time. I think 115. But, but you said you're, like, your one rep snatch was 115. Uh, I mean, there are people who have been training for years at a CrossFit yeah. gym with coaching right. <laughs> who can't snatch 115. Right. So, so I, I kind of want to make this point. Mm -hmm. You were strong already with minimal actual training. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm trying to make the point that your athletic history gave yeah. you a huge base oh, for sure. to draw yeah. from, even mm -hmm. though you weren't like well trained from a resistance training standpoint. Right. Like, nobody throughout your career had been like, okay, we're gonna follow this program that's right. intelligently thought out and we're gonna coach you very well on mm -hmm. lifts. But despite all of that, you're like, yeah, I got kind of strong. <laughs> and 115 is not a big deal for me. Or mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, 225 deadlift, for instance, you probably did on you know day one or something mm -hmm. like that. You have developed since then, but consider the difference between your first experience at CrossFit. Like you went mm -hmm. in there, not only were you able to do everything, right? Yeah. But you were able to do it to a, a level that was like almost enjoyable, yeah. right? But what if you were terrible at everything? <laughs> like, like, like seriously, right. like you could only deadlift 65 pounds, and yeah. that was a struggle. Mm -hmm. And like whatever the gymnastic, like a Turkish get up, like you couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Do you think that you would have had a different experience? Like that would have been a different... Yeah. I mean, uh, I that's a leading that. question. You're like, do you think it would have been different? Do you think you were different? <laughs> But 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 I, I guess what I'm saying is 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 it was fun for you, mm -hmm. like, and you're telling me that you have fun. Right. So you you have the personality type that you're competitive, so mm -hmm. that is fun for you. Yeah. And you did well, mm -hmm. and you were competitive. Right. So all of it like checks all of your boxes. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Whereas somebody who doesn't have that background, doesn't have that aptitude initially, I think mm -hmm. it's a different experience for them, and they yeah. do, and you know. I, I think I admire the person who goes in day one and has a terrible, like... Oh, 100%. And still keeps coming yeah, back. And keep yeah, and keeps coming back. Yeah, something to be said about that. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, uh, your sort of progress since then has actually been remarkable. That's one of the reasons, like, I wanted to bring you into the Barbell Medicine <laughs> interview series. Uh, if you say it low, it gets either creepy or, like... Right. So, all right. So you start at your 115 snatch uh, and... and in some proficiency in, in CrossFit, but you're a very strong lifter. Strength is kind of one of your, I mean, one of your things. So you said, you told me you front squatted 300. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is, I mean, that's humbling for, for a lot of people. And you, uh, your best deadlift that you've ever done with your, she does have very short arms, so you have to, yeah. <laughs> your best deadlift is what? Uh... So I haven't tested it in probably Notice the caveat. like three to four years, but I think 375. That's a lot. That's not a little bit. That's a lot. That's a very heavy deadlift. Uh, and then your bet you just PR'd your clean 260. Yeah. Which is was out of nowhere. Savage. And your snap best snatch is what? 215. These are legit. Those are legit numbers. And the ability to do that with while maintaining a huge aerobic base is mm -hmm. is super impressive. So being, I mean, do you think there's any way to achieve what you've achieved in CrossFit without this sort of strength component? Well, like without being somewhat strong already? Yeah, I mean, I I think for me, like you've talked about or you mentioned like people that go into a CrossFit gym and, you know, don't have a good time with whatever. For me, anytime gymnastics stuff showed up, sure, I... Just, it was very humbling, yeah. and I felt, I mean, so unathletic um, to the point where when I started to shift towards, okay, I want to be competitive in this, and was like, okay, I'm going to do, classes aren't enough anymore, and I'm going to do my own programming, and so I started just following stuff online, and would literally, because no one, when I was doing this by myself, no one would know what I was doing or what I was not doing. Right, right. So anytime gymnastics came up, just it. did not do it. Yeah, sure. I was like, I don't like that. Yeah. I'm like, oh, thrusters and squats, cool. cool. Okay, I'll do There's that. a barbell. Yeah. Because you're strong. Right, so I, I liked that. And I mean, it. I don't know what I was thinking because it's not like those are either magically going to get better just by me ignoring yeah, them. them. Sure. And they're not going to not show up at something like regionals. Sure. So I, I'm gonna make an argument and then you can you can argue. Okay. <laughs> well so so because because I think that, that the line of thinking is not uncommon in that mm -hmm. I have these weaknesses, I need to hammer them home, I need to mm -hmm. like address them, otherwise yeah. they're gonna be exposed. Right. However, the very first year that you did CrossFit you made it to regionals. 
That was the first year for regionals. Yeah. The, and then the next year, uh -huh. you went to regionals as well. Right. The next year, you went to regionals. And the year after that, you were very, very close to making the games. Right. Um, and, and so my kind of argument is that your strength base and your ability to get stronger rapidly with that sort of programming that also uh, had built your aerobic base and anaerobic base yeah. um, allowed you to succeed in spite of the deficiency that you would say is gymnastics. Right. Yeah. And, and I'm, okay. I'm going to make the counter argument that <clears throat> the person who comes in with great gymnastics but mm -hmm. an inability to develop proficient levels of strength mm -hmm. within that sort of programming paradigm yeah. could not have done the same thing. Um, mainly, mainly because you, you, the the strength is the barrier to entry. Like if mm -hmm. the barbell weighs X and yeah. that is heavy for you, yeah, no, it's true. You have no choice. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're you're just all right. Well, I guess mm -hmm. we're doing singles on deadlifts. Yeah, Meanwhile, right. you're like, it's fine. I can do whatever <laughs> I want. Yeah, you know. And then you get to muscle ups, and sure, maybe you got to break them up. Mm -hmm. Or you get to chest bar pull, and sure, maybe you got to break them up. But at least mm -hmm. you made it there. Yeah. So that's my that's my my argument. Isn't necessarily that if you were a burgeoning, you know, or, or a budding CrossFitter, that you yeah. should work on one or the other. Mm -hmm. My 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 argument is that if you are not strong, you don't have a prayer. Yeah. You you can't even get into the the discussion of well, what should I work on? Right. You, your strength is not high enough for you to right. have this discussion. Mm -hmm. um, my experience with CrossFit when I came to it, I was like my strength was was not too high is the wrong descriptor, but it it wasn't an issue. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, like at the time, I think I just squatted like 600 and some change, and deadlifted over 700, and benched the 400s. And well, but that was I had been a competitive powerlifter for a substantial period of time. Okay. And then I was like, oh, I have to do CrossFit now because I'm burned out on powerlifting. Yeah. So the strength stuff was not hard. Mm -hmm. But like the first time I did a clean, like I had to do an actual like squat clean. It was like 245 because I couldn't hardly hold the rack. Right. I failed a 60 kilo overhead squat because I'm like I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. But three months later, I overhead squatted. 160 kilos, mm -hmm. uh, and then I had cleaned 155 or something like that, or you know, so yeah. it wasn't. A, it just I got better. My skills improved, yeah. but the strength kind of helped me. That sort of that sort of rapid yeah. improvement, and so my my experience was that if you're strong, it makes CrossFit much easier, yeah, or much more accessible even. Right. You, you can't do CrossFit without the aerobic stuff. Mm -hmm. You can't do CrossFit without the gymnastics stuff. Right. You're not going to be good. Yeah. But if you if you don't ever develop the strength or you don't have the strength, mm -hmm. yeah. I I don't know why you're doing comp train if you can't deadlift <laughs> yeah. double body weight. Right. Yeah. Like this. Well, I think depending on what level of CrossFit sure. you're sure, talking sure. about, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I guess from totally a agree. From a competitive standpoint. Yeah, because I think like the open, for example, you don't have to be very strong unless you know there's going to be a half of a workout that asks you to do like this year sure a one or max sure. so yeah that might hurt you but for the most part the open has always been just how good is your endurance how well can you handle pain for the most part sure. i think over the years it's getting there is heavier i mean the weights are going up mm -hmm. there's more skill involved but i think that's I mean, the whole shift of, it's the same thing at regional, same things at the games. I think before you could be an amazing gymnast and roll into regionals and still do okay. Sure. But then you saw in, not necessarily last year because it was all dumbbells. I know, but, no uh, barbells. Yeah, it's totally fine not being there for that. But um, uh, no, but two years ago, we had a snatch ladder that started at 135. Yeah. And the minimum work requirement was, I think, at one, least one, one snatch. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of girls that were getting disqualified because that is either their one rep and they couldn't hit it that day or they've never hit that weight. So, I mean, now it is, but that's also the thing. Now you can't also be freakishly strong and not be Yeah, you have to have motor. Yeah, I mean, you have to have everything now. Yeah, I, th I think, it, you know, I try to make an argument that the Open was not sensitive enough to actually select for the best athletes because it was so dramatically different than regionals or the games. So that's like yeah, an argument that's own, like well, so I definitely want to hear it. So I definitely <laughs> yeah. want to hear it. it. And and but the you know, when I went down that road that argument that I had with myself mm -hmm. and this is a totally normal thing for me to have just an argument with myself. <laughs> was that well this the same top people make it on a regular basis. And so maybe that's not necessarily the case. Maybe I'm looking at it wrong. I mean, what's your what's your take on the open as far as it being representative of the demands of regionals and thus the games? Which we are assuming is a proxy for the fittest person on earth. Mm -hmm. What do you What do you think about that? 
So I don't necessarily have an issue with um, how they test from the open to regionals. I think regionals looks, I think the gap between regionals and the games is way bigger than just what they call for. Okay. Um, I do think it's a little strange that each part of it is so different. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know necessarily know if you're getting from the open to regionals, if you're getting the people that were will perform the best at the games. I think you're just getting the best people that did the best at the open and the best at regionals, and now they're at the games. Well, sure, by definition. Yeah. yeah. So sure. Um, which for me has always been because regionals tend or in the past has always been more or less skill based. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's been heavy stuff, but it's mostly. I mean, just with the venues and everything, it would be really hard to have like a swimming event or <laughs> right, you know, right, a running right. event. Yeah, at each one. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Which I would love. That That's would be amazing. Yeah. And you have but, to do the fly. Right. Yeah, really. um, but yeah, I mean, I think the Open is interesting now because CrossFit has grown so much. And, you know, years ago it wasn't a sport. And now it's this thing where we're trying to be all inclusive, you know, to get people involved at gyms. But it's also used to qualify people for this next level to get to the games. Yeah, there's and a lot of money on the line. Yeah, so it's mm -hmm. kind of weird because you almost want to see it split, but then but then would people be as invested? Because I feel like people think it is really cool that, you know, they can be like, hey, like, I'm doing the same workout as, you know, this <laughs> cross. <Colleen. laughs> Not yeah. necessarily me. Yeah, but definitely. So what else? But, um, so, so do, yeah. you, do you think the average CrossFit gym goer, recreational CrossFitter, mm -hmm. right, who just goes to the gym four times a week? Now, there's nothing wrong with you. I'm not saying there's wrong. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with you. <laughs> but we're just saying that that there's there's maybe different tiers of athletes. Do you think those, that person should participate in the Open I, on a yearly basis? I think it depends how long they've been doing it at first. I think it's okay. Um, when per, people for well, and also what is your background? I think. When people first sign up to CrossFit, if they've basically been sedentary for most of our life, and then, you know, the Open's coming up in two weeks, yeah. I think it's cool to give it a shot, but sometimes it's like, okay, maybe you're not ready for sure. that volume. Like, sure. Yeah, maybe inappropriate. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. you have to go live your everyday life after this. You don't want to not be able to walk for a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're out of training for real. Yeah, but... Um, but I understand, like, people want, I mean, that's the whole point of going to a CrossFit gym is, or for me it was, I was, and, I hate working out by myself. Oh, so really? it's like the fact that I could be around other people and talk to other people and socialize, like, that was the biggest draw at first. Sure. So, yeah, so I mean. Yeah, I would agree with that. If, if the doing a CrossFit Open significantly increases your compliance with training, mm -hmm. so like, because you love it, yeah. and you like the community participation, you would feel ostracized from the community if you yeah. did not participate, mm -hmm. and therefore, by improving your compliance, yeah. you end up at the gym, right. consistently going for another year, yeah. it's a win. Yeah. I will sacrifice that week of training and the three weeks of detraining right. it provides afterwards because it's inappropriate volume yeah. for you, yeah. <laughs> right? But I do think it's cool year to year that people can you know, see their progress or, you sure. know, like last year I couldn't do a double under and yeah. now I'm doing all these things. So provided the tests are the same and the pool is the yeah, same. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, it gets I complicated. Mean, well, yeah, because it's, I mean, that's the part of, well, especially transitioning from, I mean, I swam my whole life sure. and the pool size never changed. The events no. never changed. No. Yep. You know, it was always like, you're swimming this event. It wasn't like, oh, you hop up in the blocks, like, oh, just kidding, you're swimming this new stroke we just invented. Yeah. Like, also, the water's more this time. Right. Good yeah. luck. Yeah, so it is, yeah, so. It's complicated. Right. Nuanced, even. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Ding. It's like a nuanced counter. Right so People can play a game. Like, they do. It's God, game. Every time he <laughs> says it, oh, he's doing it again. Uh, he's still got a shirt on. We can't, we can't drink. <laughs> Uh, so, okay, so, yeah, I think I would probably agree again. If, uh, if, if, if the community thing is the reason why people are doing CrossFit in the first place, mm -hmm. do CrossFit. Yeah. Do the Open. Participate. Mm -hmm. You should probably be free, but, you know, whatever. I, yeah. <laughs> well, so, I think they have to recoup the money, and I think that's fine. All right, so, let's shift, let's shift gears a little bit. So, okay. your competitive history mm -hmm. in CrossFit, 2014. 2013's first year, you ended up going to regionals. Or, so I started in 2013. 2014 uh, was the first regionals. Yeah, first. so, yeah. Okay. And then, how'd you do there? Uh, 
honestly don't even remember. So that was when we didn't have the super regions yet. Okay. So it's like it was a sectional thing? Ju- no, so it was just Northern California. Okay. Um, and it was at San Jose State, I remember this. Um, and that was actually the first time I met Molly Fulmer. Yeah, I don't remember how I did, honestly. Um, I'm sure I could look it up. So, but you had a good time, you were ultimately unsatisfied. Right. Next year, you go back, so that's 2015. Yeah. And how'd that go? You went to regionals again. Right. This uh, was a super regional. Yeah, so they were taking top 20 out of NorCal. Okay. Instead of top 40. So when I made it in 2014... It was top I, 40. Yeah, and I got bumped in because people went teams. So I, I didn't. I wasn't actually in the top 40, so mm. I was like... Still went. Yeah, yeah, no, it was really cool. Um, and then, yeah, so 2015... Um, I think I got 23rd. Okay, in this yeah. California Super Regionals. Yeah. And they are taking like top six to the games or something like five. that. Top five. Top five. Yeah. And then 2016, you ended up seventh. Yeah. And they took that five again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, should we talk about that more? Like to bring it to this? <laughs> no. Well, so, so, I, so you guys have to know like the last event was this like rope climb, lunge, workout, right? Uh, rope climb and thrusters. Thrusters. Yeah. Something had to do. And you kept like moving down the thing and you had to run back. Yeah. And it was. Your oh, wait. Wait, which year? Are you talking about 2016? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and so it was the last event. It was like you, you Ale- uh, Alessandra Pacelli, mm-hmm. and Brooke were like like right there yeah. for number five. If whoever won yeah. was going to go right. out, of, out of you three. Uh-huh. And I think China Cho would have been in the mix, but she ended up like just crushing that workout. Well, so China Cho and Jamie Hagia are just freaks of nature when it comes to Lego Store Climbs. I and I was just like, I'm yeah. eating. <laughs> Well, so, so right, at that point, so I was like, oh, maybe it'll be like competition. And I was like, okay, they're like really, yeah. really good at this. And so, yeah, it was it was you three, last event, mm-hmm. and then uh, Alexander Pacelli just ended up yeah. nudging out, and then I think Brooke got sixth, and you got yeah. seventh. And mm-hmm. So, okay, so that you're like, I'm close, yeah. but that probably didn't go over very well. You weren't pumped about that. Oh, no, not at all. But Lots of crying and pizza and beer after that. It was weird. We had the same experience. <laughs> there was a lot of crying and beer and pizza for me. But, yeah. yeah. But but you find out at some point that your your rotator cuff's torn. Yeah. So so here's the here, yeah. So I want to shift gears and talk about this injury thing for a while. Mm-hmm. So you're it's 2016. You just like have pre- performed at arguably one of the highest levels that you've ever performed at. Mm-hmm. And then did your shoulder hurt the whole time? No. So I think it was. I mean, through that open, actually, when I was watching video of the open 2016, I'm like heavily rock taped up, like. I think yeah right. I mean, it just won't you look good. good for yeah, the you day. Look good, right. so, black tape is fun. black. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't not necessarily like awful pain, but just a lot of discomfort. Sure. Um, but nothing to where I was like, I really need to ch- get this checked out. I was just like, oh, I'm doing CrossFit. Like my shoulders hurt. Like, yeah. Weird. Don't We're doing it. so much shoulders. Yeah. Um, and then. And where you weren't bench pressing at this time. Uh, I think like once a month, once maybe. A month. Yeah. You strict pressing, not as much. No. Because most people just really. push press and jerk if you're yeah, doing pressing right. at the time. Yeah, we weren't doing much. So, uh, like other than the Olympic lifts and, and squatting, like not a whole lot of. Just FYI, she like presses like 45 or triple, <laughs> which is savagery. And she told me that her close grip bench is her favorite lift. What What do you bench press? Just. just uh. What did they hit? Um. I think I hit like 205 or 210 close grip bench. That's incredible. <laughs> That's a really good bench press. All right. Okay. She's not a power lifter yet. Eventually, um, I would just like to have like just do lifting, just for lifting. She said weightlifting originally, but I think we're just gonna convince we her. We both. That- that's what they say. We'll get to the dark side. You said you like sumo deadlifts, so it's fine. That's true, yeah. All right, so so this is after the regionals. When do you find out that your rotator cuff is torn? Uh, let's see. About a month, I think, after. So that's like August 2016. What was the... You decided to finally go get an MRI, or what's the... Yeah, so I started to go back into training, and it was just nagging me too much. I was having to modify too many workouts, and... Um, squat snatches, ring muscle ups, chest bar, just really hurt it and um, was like, you know, maybe it's all in my head, maybe I just need to take a break, but let's get an MRI just so I can have peace of mind. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to know what was going on. I was like, well, you know, I, I just figured that if it was, I mean, as bad as a 
bacteria that it was that, you know, I wouldn't be able to lift my arm and all these things and... Well, you said you were just 80% torn. Yeah. Yeah, so, so I don't know the percentage offhand, mm -hmm. but there's some non-zero percentage significant, maybe like a third of people who are walking around over the age of 30 who have at least uh, some tear that's oh, visible yeah. on rotator cuff, mm -hmm. uh, on, Im on imaging. So what's most interesting to, to me, not only has been your comeback story, but then also initially that you were able to perform at such a high level with an 80% tear yeah. in your rotator cuff that right. will ultimately require surgical repair. Yeah. So, so to me, one of the most interesting things about this is that you were able to do so and it was fine. Yeah. You know, so that, I mean, there are people out there who are, if you have a rotator cuff tear, the, you know, the re repair isn't necessarily something needs to happen unless you have instability, right, chronic right. pain, mm -hmm. like it's affecting your ability to earn a wage, which mm -hmm. all those things, it was kind of like, yeah. it was there for you. Right. So you have this repair done when? Um, the be very, I think it was the 1st of October, 2000. How do you feel after you get the when you when you find out you need that surgery? So I remember I was driving to work and my coach who helped me um, like went through him to get the MRI and stuff and he sent me the results on my phone and and I, I was like I probably shouldn't have been looking at that while I was driving. I had to pull over into a Best Buy parking lot and just bawled my eyes out. You were upset? Was, yeah. Why was it, why, so, yeah, I guess I'm wondering why were you upset about it. Because on the one hand, you had this, like, performance that you felt like was not your best, mm -hmm. and you're like, well, now I got a reason. Here we go. We gotta be better next year. That's, like, one way to take it. Another yeah. way to take it is, oh, crap. So, for me, I saw 7th as, I mean, the year before, I was 23rd. So, I was mm -hmm. like, okay, that's, I'm like, yeah, I'm really bummed that I didn't get to go to the games, but hey, if I can make that progress sure. in a year, like, what could I do with another year? So in my head, after I had, you know, gone through just being sad about not making the games, you know, I was thinking, I just have to do the same thing and just be healthy. That's all I was telling myself. So sure. I was like, so when I found out, you know, my shoulder was torn, I was like, there goes the year. Oh, you, like, thought, you thought 2016 was done, the next oh, year, 2017 yeah. was done. Yeah. 100%. I was like, I have to, I was like, there's no way for me to, maybe I could get back to most of the movements, but to be able to just undergo all the volume that you need to not only train, but then do at regionals. I was like, there's no, you know, you also start to think, you know, I, I won't be doing CrossFit forever. I want to be able to move my shoulders and arms well for the rest of my life. So I don't, right, right. Exactly. Exactly. I understand. I know. Um, so, yeah, so I thought 2017 was going to be a total wash. So, we're talking about 2017. Molly calls you. We got in touch somehow and had never hung out before, but um, we, uh, I called her up and I was like, hey, I'm doing, it was 16.5. I was like, hey, I really don't want to do this by myself. That's thrusters, bar, burpee. Yeah. Jump over. Right. Awful workout. I did that workout. Did you? Well, yeah. I mean, that was my run at the games. Um, you know, people really thought that I was going to do well. Yeah. they were like, you're so strong. Yeah. It's like, well, benching helps burpees. I, that's what I think, right? Just bounce right up. Right. And I felt like, you know, my, you know, boobs are big enough that I thought that I was, <laughs> the range of motion was going to be low. The problem is it's just too much mass. Like, you know, to move. yeah, to yeah. move. <laughs> I remember in the middle of that workout, I just wanted to quit. But then I was mm -hmm. like, if I don't put a time in, I'll mm -hmm. have to do it again. Oh, yeah, but no, thrusters no. are easily the worst work, the worst movement for me. Really? Go thrusters, yes. double unders, burpees. Like in, in like yeah, in that order. Burpees, but everything yeah. else yeah. is fine. Yeah. Like, you want muscle ups? Oh, oh I saw. Oh, yes, they're good. They're, they, I mean, look, they're not pretty, but maybe. <laughs> Like, think they're ugly. if you think like a muscled <laughs> turtle, like, all right, hey, muscly turtle boy, go, like, get yourself up on those rings. And they're like, oh, he did one. <laughs> I, and then, or like a deficit mm -hmm. handstand push-up. Like, mm -hmm. my fit, my best workout ever would have been, okay, we're going to do really heavy deadlifts for low reps, and then, like, really deep, strict deficit handstand push-ups. That would have been my best, like, like yeah, yeah. or a workout that already exists would be King Kong. My best, would be my best workout. Oh, that's a fun workout. Yeah. yeah. Now, I'm like 455. Yeah, yeah. Two, two, <laughs> no, like, what about the clean? Like, it's only 255. It's, it's fine. Uh, but yeah, 
Okay. Enough, nobody cares about my crossword. <laughs> <experience. laughs> That's true. I, I wrote this long thing, and you know, people were like, well, how did you do? I was like, well, I finished uh, 1,999. Which was 1,998 behind Ben Smith that year, nice. so I felt like, yeah, I like that about myself. Yeah. It was pretty close. You give me another year. <laughs> right, right. I'm gonna get there. Uh, all right. So Molly calls you. She's like, "Hey, you should do team." So she had been talking with. So we were really good friends, or still are. Um, and she had been talking to Jason Kalipa. He was talk. So they had a team in 2015 that. Um, Almost won the games, but that's he, that's he fit. yeah. So okay. Okay. unfortunately, that year Miranda tore ACL. I remember that she like tried to go do everything. It was yeah, out there with, like her knee. Right, like, yeah, which was brutal because they were just crushing everyone. Um, so that was a bummer. But Jason was like, "Hey, like, kind of like we're gonna get the band back together a little bit." Sure, yeah. um, but Miranda was done, and you know, I had uh, Molly and I had ta- or and I think Jason and I had talked a little bit about it the year before, like the thought of going team. I was like, you know, I'm going to do individual this year, but like, who knows in the future. And, um, and I told Molly, I was like, Hey, you know, if I can, you know, get my, uh, I, I honestly didn't know how long it was going to be like the rehab process and all this stuff. Um, but I was like, Hey, like team might be a good option. Um, sure. just because I could, in the open, do the bare minimum, and we can have an alternate and still get a team. So I just have to be ready for regionals, which gave me yeah, just a few more months. Um, and um, honestly, it was the thank God for that team because I don't think I would have been able to push the way I did through rehab and physical therapy and all that stuff mm-hmm. if I didn't have more of an immediate goal in sight um, sure. and yeah. more people counting on me. Um, uh, because coming back from that surgery was way worse than I thought it would be. Yeah, that's what, yeah. You, that's what you'd mentioned. Um, I guess I'm more curious, and people are probably curious, what about your training changed after you were done with, like, just the range of motion stuff? Did you find... Mm-hmm. So so you're back to training. You've been cleared to, like... Do everything. Do whatever that feels yeah. like you can do, right? Right. So, all right. So what was the first thing you tried that you couldn't do, and you were like, okay, we have to do something else? Is um, there anything like that? I mean, it was literally a back and forth with my physical therapist every single day. I was oh, like, okay. can I try this? And yeah, he's yeah. like, sure. And then it's just me sitting around for 10 minutes like, I don't know, can I do it? Can I do it? Because <laughs> yeah. like, you just feel, I mean, half, or I would say more than half the battle is forgetting that you had surgery. Sure. And um, honestly, I think it was maybe like a month or two ago that I finally stopped thinking about my shoulder in workouts. Oh wow! Okay. Because um, you're just you're anticipating something going wrong or hurting, and because um, it had been torn for so long, I just got used to that. Um, <laughs> right. Right. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> right. But, uh, but yeah. So there was nothing that you couldn't do. You just had to get over the anxiety of like, hey, it's back together. Yeah. I mean, I remember when I first did, I was so scared to just hold a plank. Oh. That was really freaky. Yeah. Um, and then I could do knee push-ups, and that was, like, super cool. Like, I'm doing push-ups. Uh, yeah. All right. But it was, I mean, it's so humbling, and, like, sure. you just forget. Um, I mean, that's the thing, especially not to get, like, super cheesy and corny, but, like, when I have really crappy days in the gym, I'm like, I would have given anything to have a really <laughs> day at the gym, like, when I couldn't lift my arm above my head. 100%. Um, yep. So honestly, like, it's a blessing in disguise in that way. It just puts things into perspective. How many times have you used the hashtag blessed since you're... Not many. I feel like I... <laughs> I just feel... I feel like it's been ruined. It's I been think, ruined. like, blessed is, like, a good word. Yeah, but you can't use it now. But no, it's like people are like... It just feels... It's like a, you know, basic thing to do. Right, right. <laughs> like, if you have Uggs on and your pink you know, Victoria Pink gear, then you can use yeah, hashtag plus. Right. But only if your face is not in the picture. You have to be facing it. It has to be a plus. Sure. It's a plus picture. Yeah. Hashtag plus. 100%. Yeah. Got it. I'm glad we see With a Bible quote. With a Bible quote. Oh my God. <laughs> this is all the worst social media trends of 2017. Oh God. Yeah, they're ruining it for the rest of us. Did anything else tra- change about your training? Do you find that you were benching more, pressing more, doing more strict work than before? Like, is that like, anything notable that you can recall yeah I think especially not necessarily right after surgery but um, when I started with OPEX definitely more um, 
like felt like more bodybuilding as sure. stuff. Uh, not necessarily that it is bodybuilding, but I was doing a lot more. Like when I first started with OPEX, I was doing no kipping whatsoever. All like doing strict pull-ups at least once a week, sure. probably two to three times a week. Um, benching more, strict pressing more. Like didn't start push pressing till. I mean, somewhat recently, wasn't doing many jerks or anything like that, um, and it was definitely annoying for a long time. You're like, why am I doing this? Right. I can't do other stuff. But then, like two months later, all of a sudden, strict muscle ups feel amazing. Right, because you wait, you're stronger, you develop. This yeah, stuff. and it's but it's, I mean, and that's the thing. It's nice to feel with gymnastics for me. That's a weaker point. Seeing it in progression, like you would to get better at a lift. Sure. You know what I mean? Instead of feel like before in the past I've just been like banging my head against a wall just doing them over and over again hoping that something's gonna magically click sure and I mean if you want to get better at snatching you don't just go and snatch every day like well, there's right. stuff to yeah well so I think I think the more skill that is involved the more skill that is involved in a movement mm -hmm. the less at some point you outstrip your ability to just get better at the skill. Like yeah. you've, you've effectively maximized the return on investment mm -hmm. from your training if you're just doing that movement. Yeah. And a snatch is like that, it's very high skill. Muscle mm -hmm. up is very much like that yeah. outside of the strength con contributions. Mm -hmm. So Kyle Pierce, who, you know, you're familiar with Kendrick Ferris? Yeah. So Kendrick Ferris is coach. The The running joke is that Kyle Pierce is never in the room whenever he actually trains, <laughs> no. but he's listed uh, as his coach. Okay. He actually wrote a paper that suggested that as a little weightlifter, you're developing most of your skill within a year, and after that, your skill's not mm -hmm. really improving. And mm -hmm. so at that point, the only way to get better is to mm -hmm. get stronger. Yeah. Whatever the limiting factor is for you, mm -hmm. um, you have to get better at it. And so yeah. for the snatch, it's gonna be strength. Mm -hmm. And for the ring muscle up, it's yeah. gonna, strength is gonna be right. involved there, right? If you're not strong enough to pull your chest to the rings, yeah. like you're gonna run out of kip after a right. while. Mm -hmm. Or if your grip strength is limiting, then mm -hmm. that's gonna be an issue. So yeah, I mean, I, I think that's super interesting and a nice salient point to tell people. <clears throat> but it's cool now, like you're so you're crushing it. We're in the middle, we're at the end of the open. Yeah. We have one more workout left. And you're sitting in the top 50 or 50 something worldwide. And in the region you're, do you know what you're at? You're fourth? Yeah, just humble brag. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's awesome. And uh, okay. so you're gonna go to the California regional again and, and do battle mm -hmm. as an individual. Yeah. Uh, how would you say this year's open is going? It's been really fun. Yeah. Probably the most, I mean, I think the most fun I've had during an open was last year when With I was like, stuff. yeah. Um, and honestly, because there was absolutely no pressure on how I did, sure. you know, it allowed me to just sit back and take it all in. I think the last workout of last year's open was the first, so that was a thrusters and double unders one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that was, I hadn't done a thruster since my surgery. I didn't do that one. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was like, thrusters, double letters? Ah. Yeah. Nah. Not um, for me. So I hadn't done the thruster since my surgery. And, um, but I had, you know, I'd front squatted. Um, I'd been doing double unders. <clears throat> I had pressed a little bit, not super heavy. Mm. Um, I was like, okay, I'll give this a shot. If it hurts or like something goes wrong, I'll stop. Like, it doesn't matter if I have a score. <clears throat> and I actually got to do that workout, which was awesome. It was cool. Yeah. Huh. Um, but yeah, this year's Open has been really cool, mostly uh, just because of the environment at sure. OPEX. Um, new gym, new you. Yeah. yeah. Um, the coaching is phenomenal, and the fact that I get to do the Open against such elite level CrossFit females. Mm -hmm. I've never gotten to... I mean, Molly and I finally started doing Open workouts together, which was awesome but I've never had so many. I feel like it's really hard to find gyms that are primarily female dominant when, yeah. I mean, well, in every sense of the word, like, I mean, when I was a strength coach, I was the only female on staff, and yeah. I mean, it was, but yeah. Um, it's like, a, it's like an actual excellent, like, segue, actually, into talking about women in strength. Yeah. I mean, so you're, you have this platform, you have the check mark next to your name, which means you're legit, <laughs> that's what it means. They only give it to I really I, so funny story. I like woke up, forget when that happened, but all of a sudden someone texted me and was like, "This is so legit, you have a blue check mark." And I was like, "What are you talking about?" 
Yeah. And so I had no idea how I got it oh. or where it came from. And I was like, I don't even know how you get these things. I assume that somebody was like trying to be Colleen. No, no actually, it's not that what happened. Oh, no? Uh, Red, Red Bull got Red it for me. Yeah. So my, my friend Laura, she went to the Olympics. She was the Winter Olympics. She's uh, oh, okay. She does like ice luge. And if it's not that, like if it's a different event within like the Winter Olympics, she's going to mm. kill me. I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, she's got like a, a like 15,000 followers or something, which, yeah. but she got me check. Right, right, and I'm pretty sure the Olympics did that for her. Yeah. Be, so, which, so I need to either do something like legitimate to get the blue check, <laughs> or like actually. We can try and like make a bunch of fake, you know, Jordan Barbara. Yeah. Yeah. Come <laughs> on. Hey, I'm a doctor. Help me out. Instagram. Help me out. Um, no. So, so yeah, it, it, it's actually a perfect seg segue. Mm -hmm. So you're a female, and you're in a male. Dom I mean, you are in a male-dominated sort of genre, the strength and fitness industry. And you mm -hmm. did. You've been there as a coach, now as an athlete, mm -hmm. um, and then all now as an influencer, or whatever that word yeah. means. And I guess you know, I wanted to get your take on what does it feel like to you having kind of transcended all these different roles as a female, I mean, how do you, how do you view, do you think it's getting better for, for women? Do you think it's the same? I think it's getting better. Um, I think it was, and maybe it was just because of the age I was when I was coaching. I found it definitely harder to be in that realm as a female, um, coaching versus being an athlete. So I was in charge of men's water polo, women's swimming, and then men's and women's diving. And women swimming wasn't too bad because a lot of the girls I had swam with and I knew the coaches and I mean, it's female to female. It's not as, I don't know, intimidating. And sure. they were a really respectful group and they understood like, hey, I'm changing roles. I'm like, when we're doing this, I'm not your friend, so to speak. <laughs> like, I do not to do it. No, but uh, so it was, we had a good rapport going and, um, but men's water polo was, it, but it was a life-changing experience, okay. 100%. So um, it was the one team that, sorry, men's water polo, but <laughs> I really didn't want. I was like, really? please don't give me men's water polo. Why? Um, honestly, it just kind of scared me. I was like, I just don't think they're good. They've never had a female coach, whether okay. it was you know, on deck or in the weight room. I just don't know how they're going to, I mean, when you think about, you know, college water polo guys, 18 to 21, you're like, I don't know how well they're going to respond to a female, like telling them how to lift, which is, you know, I mean, still very more of a masculine type thing. I don't know. I just feel like they would, I was a little nervous how that yeah. would go. Um, and I mean, how was it? So it's funny talking to some of them now because they're like, oh yeah, we totally, when we heard you're our strength coach, we thought you were going to be a total pushover. Like we were going to walk all over you. We were like, oh, we're going to get away with so much <laughs> And so I was really nervous because I think one of the things was I'm not one as a coach. I'm not a drill sergeant. I don't, I'm not a yeller. I don't, that's just not me. And I've sure. seen women try to take on that role feeling like oh because i'm a female i have to come off as this like badass angry like and you can tell it's just not genuine and i feel like athletes pick up on that do you think they're assuming more stereotypically masculine sort of traits and they're yeah like, they're like well i see the guy coaches it. doing that so i'm gonna do that and i'm yeah. like okay i'm not gonna win them over or get any buy-in by that because that's just not me sure. um so I just started coming up with, uh, whether it was workouts or like punishments, so to speak. I'm like, I'm not gonna yell, I'm not gonna scream, but like, if you don't do A, B, and C, like we're either running stairs, we're doing burpees, sure. we're doing, and it was like, and you just had to, cause that was the thing, this, they just needed to know that there were lines that you could not cross. Yeah. Um, and one of those memorable things was, uh, they were in off season, so, it was just time for me to just get to play with workouts and like have fun. And I was like, oh, we're gonna go to the basketball stadium. We're gonna run stairs. Oh wow. Yeah. And I, I forget how many guys were on the team, but nine of them puked at the end. You're, you're killing these people. Hey. <laughs> Low key. Low key. But it was great because not like I would never give a workout being like, I just want you to throw up. Sure, sure. But it got that somewhat of the initial buy-in to be like, okay, she's not messing around. Right. Like, we need to listen. Um, 
Yeah, I, th- I think, you know, it, it's it's also hard for me to talk on this because being a guy, you know, mm-hmm. it's people like, you don't understand, you're not a woman. I'm like, no, that's true. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I've been in this industry for a long time. Yeah. I find that, yeah, women, women I think I want more of you guys in, mm-hmm. not only in the industry, participating both as clients, mm-hmm. coaches, and professionals. Yeah. Um, I, I want it to be uh, less intimidating. But I want less of an obstacle, you know, when I, I don't want to, I mean, I've had, even as, as recent as yesterday, this, this woman who was in my Instagram live, who was like, hey, I want to go to the gym, but I'm super intimidated. Like, what, what do you recommend I do? I'm like, I recommend you get over that. Mm-hmm. Go to the gym, not because it's going to be easier, not because I'm trying yeah. to, you know, minimize the fact that you feel intimidated, but just mm-hmm. because just the, we have these really effective tools that you can use in formal yeah. training, resistance training, in CrossFit. Um, that you're not letting yourself have access to because of this intimidation thing. And so I'd rather you be uncomfortable for a few days, you right. know, and, and get these benefits yeah. than have to like shortchange yourself. I, I find that it almost seems to be like a, 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 like a self, either a self-fulfilling prophecy or maybe that's the wrong way to describe it. It's like, if you feel intimidated and you feel like, mm, I can't be in the space or yeah. I'm not supposed to be in the space or right, uh, right. this space is all dudes. Yeah. then people will never end up fulfilling that potential that they have mm-hmm. of being the subject matter expert, of being like, I know all of the stuff about coaching and programming and like, you know, let I'm the expert. So yeah. you want to listen to me? Like, all right, cool. Like, right. I'm going to waste my time. Yeah. So you, you're in an interesting position that you have all this knowledge and you can give it to somebody. And if someone doesn't want to listen, you say, okay, yeah. somebody will. Right. And, and, and how do we get more people like you? How do we get more people who are in that position as an expert to be able to, to put that message out instead of instead of look at my butt? Mm-hmm. Which again is fine. Yeah. If you want to do that, like that's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. I'm not right. sexualizing it. I'm just saying yeah, that yeah. that is not something that I necessarily care about as strength conditioning. Mm-hmm. I want right. you to be an expert on how to coach, yeah. on how to program, on how to get your message out mm-hmm. so we get more people training. Yeah. And more people, you know, I don't think are training mm-hmm. because of the butt. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe I'm yeah. wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. So how do we get more people, uh, more women, uh-huh. to end up in this position as a subject matter expert versus mm-hmm. just the using the the physical to get money or likes or whatever? Yeah. What do you What are your thoughts on that? So I think it's a little bit specifically in strength and conditioning, just because we're still not seeing or I'm sure there are some, but very, very few when it comes to revenue sports, like football and basketball. You're just not seeing females in those roles. Um, As as coaches is what you're saying? Or as strength coaches. As strength coaches, yeah. Yeah. Um, And like I loved, you know, seeing football train and learning more about it, but I knew that it would have, maybe not a miracle, but it would have been extremely hard for me to, you know, be like, I want to be the football strength coach one day. Right. You know what I mean? Do you think it's because you hadn't played football before? Well, I think that's that's, a lot to do with it. And that's how they end up hiring people. It's like, oh, you were a football player. You understand the game. Also, you're a coach. No, I I think it would be more difficult. Um, And I think, I think one day it could potentially be more of the norm. I don't know if that's, so I think in that field it's a little hard because I feel like females hit the ceiling a little bit quicker than sure. there's just le- there's less there's less opportunities for them yeah. in the in the industry right yeah. I mean that's kind of why I ended that journey which I may go back to eventually but I just felt like I had capped out on what I wanted out of that job for the time sure. being um, and I didn't see really any place to grow in that particular job at the time. Sure. Um, I think when it comes to just the fitness industry in general, I mean, I think there's a lot of room for females to be yeah. experts in their field. How do you get more women training? <laughs> I mean, it's, I feel like it's hard for me to speak on it because I wasn't necessarily, you know, intimidated to go into a CrossFit gym sure. or into, but at the same time, that experience, um, I mean, CrossFit, as much as I like whine about workouts and like all that stuff, I mean, it gave me something so valuable. Like, I mean, working with female athletes, um, I mean, the last place they wanted to be was a weight room because of what they thought it would make them look like. Sure. And I was that person for a long time. I was so scared of getting big and I 
hated being muscular. I mean, I would have family members be, like, after I was swimming, they're like, okay, so are you going to, like, lean out and get, like, smaller now? And I'm like, uh, like, mm. <laughs> as, as an aside, uh, when we met, we were at San Jose Airport, and here's, yes. and so, from my perspective, uh -huh. right, so for doing a POV, it's, I see black Reebok Nano 6s with a gum sole, a Reebok backpack, and then traps. And I was like... <laughs> Well, I bet that's Colleen Fosh. What's up? Uh, so, uh, so yeah, I was like, "Who's Trap Queen?" We got to uh, introduce myself. Uh, yeah, well, I, yeah. So I, that's yeah, that's definitely a prevail, uh, uh, prevailing sort of mindset, mm -hmm. or was. But I think yeah. it's getting better. Mm -hmm. This whole the strongest sexy thing, as much as you know, people want to like, mm -hmm. you know, say being comfortable in your skin is sexy. I agree with that 100. Yeah. But the strongest sexy thing, and then also CrossFit. Uh, influencing the mainstream and showing that women can be strong <clears throat> and 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 be comfortable in their own bodies mm -hmm. and everything. I think that's been a huge push towards getting more women to train. Yeah, and I'm 100 percent behind that. Right, because I feel like the more women that we have training, the more women we have who are going to want to go into coaching and helping other mm -hmm. women. And then yeah. it's just us. It's like a positive feedback right. sort of thing. So we have role models. Like whether or not you would be a role model, you are because you're in the public light and you're you have this platform. You know, it's a really unique thing, I think, that you are bringing to the table. You have a coaching background, you have this unique story, and then you get to connect with hundreds of thousands of people on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And maybe one day you'll do an Instagram Live. I think, yeah. You can. You should make breakfast while you do <laughs> Instagram Live. That's the, that's the key. I do need to just, yeah, just I need do to it. do one. Yeah. yeah, just do one. And you say, hi, I'm Colin Fodge. Uh -huh. Yeah, let's ask me questions. Yeah. And you can just turn it off. Right. That's fine. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. You want to tell people who are, who's helping you out? Who's your, like, uh, this year? You got sponsors? You got Yeah. Coaches? Um, so coaches, uh, my main coach is Mike Lee and then James Fitzgerald is also helping us all out. Um, and honestly, I feel like I have to, uh, mention, I mean, Molly, she's not necessarily my coach, but um, yeah, yeah, she's but going to be my coach at regionals, oh, right. or kind of an assistant coach, sure, sure. pregnant assistant coach, yeah. um, and pretty much Red Bull Trifecta has been awesome with the food, um, yeah. And where can people find out more about you? Uh, on Instagram, just Colleen Foch, um, nothing check fancy. Mark. Look for yeah, the check mark. Check mark. yeah. Um, hopefully we'll venture into YouTube, the YouTube. The tubes. It's yeah. It's a dangerous game. And then, uh, are people, are you taking, are you coaching people now at all online or doing anything like that? Uh, not right now, but that's definitely something that I would love to segue into more in the off season and stuff, especially with, I feel like recently have learned a lot more with nutrition and just figuring all that stuff out, so. So stay tuned, Colleen's gonna be an online coach. <laughs> and if Flitz goes up, she happens to do that, we'll link her stuff. Yeah. So, hey, thanks for coming to the hotel room. Thank you. <laughs> it's always weird. Come to my hotel room. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you get the honor, you get to clap. What? You get to clap. Yeah. Hi, I'm up? Jordan Feigenbaum, I'm Jordan underscore Bartle Medicine. Uh, <laughs> I have a shirt on, no one understands why. <laughs> I can't take my shirt off. Own shirts. <laughs> can confirm. Do you want me to. Sorry, that we can edit this no, Do you fine. want me to talk to you or talk to. Oh! Uh, as I'm answering. Or does it matter? Doesn't matter. I'm gonna zoom in really close on your face. Oh, okay. So you're like, not really actually... close. <laughs> I just like that I have that on video. So. The whole B-roll is just going to be you <laughs> clapping. Uh, it's going to be a loop. It's going to be a gif. Like, I just... I don't care about the other ones. I don't care about what you've done.